Uh, a little bit of a Tasmanian tale that if you see a deer in the morning driving to your location, it's going to be a good day's fishing. We've just lucked out. The ironic thing is that every time that I've seen a deer, <laughs> it's been the complete opposite. Fingers crossed. There's a vast majority of things that you can do on the east coast of Tasmania. There's some beautiful countryside, beautiful rolling hills and valleys on your travel and transit on the way down here. My name is Tim Weibrow, uh, Tazcast is my passion project and we're located here on the beautiful east coast of Tasmania, nearby to St Helens. We're very fortunate today. Uh, this week we've had the strongest winds in Tasmania in around six years. So we had some 85 kilometer an hour gusts at one point, and I think up north it was even a little bit further up on the mainland as we like to call it down here in Tassie. Today was a bit of an interesting day. We did not think that we were going to get out as wide as we did. Due to all of the fresh water that has just gushed out of all of the estuaries around here, we've had to go wider to be able to find and mark some fish because at the moment, if we're throwing jigs down, we just feel like the fish can't see it. So we went about 25 kilometers offshore. Um, we were marking up some gemfish. Um, we were hoping for some blue eye travella. Unfortunately, we could not mark them. A very favorite technique of mine is either using the electrics or just going a little bit more of a cowboy perspective and dropping some one kilo jigs down on the shelf and seeing what you can pick up, which is always a pretty fun activity. Alrighty, so we have just reached the continental shelf. What we're going to do today is drop a one kilo or 880 gram Ocean's Legacy jig and try and hook up to a blue eye or some gemfish, both very tasty critters. So what I'm gonna do, I'm running a 200 pound mono uh, with a nice FG, meter and a half of liter. A nice little trick to actually tighten your FG and secure it in place without um, wrapping it around your jumper and breaking some threads. I get some old rollers and I actually secure it with a couple of wraps next to each other or around the roller. Saves you from cutting your hands, locks it into place and really grabs sprayed onto the mono. So we've pulled up at 370 meters of water. Here's our one kilo jig. I'm just using a little Torium combo, 80 pound braid, as I mentioned, 200 pound. And down she goes. My action down on the bottom is usually a pretty erratic retrieve with the knife jig, just kind of fluttering it up. Typically the gem fish and the blue eye can sit up around 10, 15 meters from the bottom. So that's sort of the, the area I'm gonna be focusing on. So the target species today that we set out on when we got to the shelf were blue eye travella. Uh, we didn't catch any of those, unfortunately. We caught some gem fish, which I highly rate when you eat it fresh. It is such a beautiful fish to eat. How's that? There's no minimum size for these guys down here in Tassie. So this one's definitely coming home with us. Got to be happy with that. Very similar creature to the ribbon fish. Uh, we also caught some pink ling. These guys are pretty tasty. You'll see them in a lot of shops around Tassie. Crazy eel looking thing. That's going in the bin and coming home with us. Behind me here is my Yellowfin Southerner. I absolutely love the way that the Yellowfin rides. The zip weight trim tabs that I do have on it really assists, and especially in choppy water as well. I don't feel unsafe. I feel as if it handles the water down here in Tasmania very well. And the overall build of it, um, it's just perfectly suited to the waters down here in Tassie, and I couldn't be happier. I've owned it for about a year now. I've already put about 300 hours on the clock, uh, running a Mercury Pro XS 225 on the back, and I absolutely love the donk. She is a precious thing. Very quiet, very sporty when it needs to be as well, and she pushes this along very well. Uh, the top speed in the Southerner that I've got to is 43 knots, um, so what, about 80 kilometers an hour? 
which is pretty impressive for something weighing around two ton, uh, maybe two and a half, and she's completely full with the motor on. Uh, I'm a little bit of a nerd, work with technology for a living, and I love the interface on the NSS Evo that I run in this vessel. It's very user-friendly, uh, it's got all of the different apps and, and features that I have really started to resonate with when it comes to marking up fish and even just navigating around the seas of Tasmania. So I do have two transducers on the yellow fin. Uh, I've got a TM265, uh, one kilowatt, which we were using quite a lot today out at the shelf, running on 50 hertz to mark up. When I purchased the yellow fin, I upgraded the bait board so I can have eight tackle boxes in there. It's a fantastic option, so when you're out in the swell, you can quickly just pick out what you need, use the little flat tray as well to uh, rig up whatever you need to go and chase. Uh, I have done a couple of overnighters in the Yellowfin uh, Southerner, and there's plenty of room. You can sleep two people up there. There's plenty of storage as well. Uh, so I've named my Southerner Clickbait, which I think is uh, quite ironic. It, it ties in with everything that I'm doing with my YouTube channel. The design was done by a friend overseas. I liked putting a little bit of a hidden meaning into the mouse that the skeleton is casting out with his little Legionnaire's hat and his stormy seas because that's a very iconic thing down here in Tasmania. Fishing for me stemmed uh, from my early childhood. I've always been surrounded by fishermen, whether that be from my father or other family members, my granddad, and I've just always been around the water. And I think down here in Tasmania, we've just got such an awesome fishery that I think I've been quite inquisitive by all of the different species that you can catch down here. But I think over the last couple of years throughout the, uh, the pandemic, I've been able to resonate with it a little bit more, just being stuck at home and pursuing this hobby a little bit more I guess seriously. It's still always a fun day out on the water, um, but I just love everything that I've been able to do by capturing content and sharing the learning curve and experiences that I have whilst boating. And, you know, I haven't had this boat for an awfully long time, but there are just so many things that you learn throughout your journey. And with Tazcast, it's been a fantastic outlet for me to share those experiences with other people. Because to me, there's nothing more sentimental than cooking up your own fish that you've caught and knowing exactly where it's come from, the respect it was treated with when you caught it. Yeah, it's a beautiful feeling. So I think we'll top it off tonight with a bit of a sunset down at the dunes. We'll get some of the bikes out and go and have a bit of a cook up on the beach, uh, cook some wraps and just watch that sunset in good company, good music. And it's a typical thing that we like to do down here on the East Coast, especially when we come down here over the summer period and holiday. And uh, yeah, that area is just such an awesome recreational area of this uh, part of the world.